So I've got the, uh, the gut stripped out of the insides and I have a, big, a hollow space and I can work on that easily. Uh, so I was thinking of what kind of electronics I want to put inside. Arduino might be a little bit not powerful enough for what I want to do, but maybe it would keep in line with uh, the, what I had envisioned for this thing. But I thought about, well, yes, P32, or whether I should put in a Raspberry Pi. I saw somebody put in a Raspberry Pi. I think he worked at Microsoft, and um, he had machine vision and stuff, and he had all this things that he had added to it, and he can open up a virtual window into the machine, so he can just there sit there at his laptop and control the whole machine and look at its camera and stuff. So that's a bit too much for what I want to do. And I was thinking, okay, well, I just need two motor controllers and some other things, and it dawned on me, well, I've already got all, I've, I've already got everything I need. Oops. Um, so, uh, this guy's kind of in the way. Let me, let me move him over. Now, before we talk about this other thing, let me, let me first talk about the, uh, what's inside the thing first. Okay. So I love to reverse engineer things. So, um, here's the here's the brains of the of the Omnibot, and uh, there's a FM receiver here at the 40 megahertz. You just broadcast tones. A certain tone makes it go forward. A certain tone makes it go backwards. That that's how the thing works. Um, and where is that tone decoded and everything? Well, it's in this chip down here. And there's a micro a microcontroller, so it does have smarts in it has a microcontroller. It has uh, H-bridges for the two motors. Uh, but yeah, what kind of microcontroller does it have? Anybody want to guess? Anybody want to guess? I think this thing was built in the 90s, late 90s. Um, and so you might think, oh, late 90s, Z80, nah, maybe, maybe some kind of, you know, 8051 or something like that. No, it's, it's Oki Semiconductor, so there's a clue, Oki Semiconductor. Um, and it is, uh, like, like I said before, this, this schematic is for the Omnibot Senior, and I have the re original, so it doesn't match exactly, um, but it does use the same microprocessor and the same H bridges. So the microprocessor just has two lines to one motor and two lines to one motor, that's how that works. Um, two megahertz microprocessor, it is an MSM, 6411. Anybody remember a 6411? I'd never heard of such a thing. Um, so, I thought I had the data sheet. Where's the data sheet? No, oh, I don't have the data sheet here. Oh man. Let me go find the data sheet. All right, so the chip of the day is a 6411 high speed and simple four bit microcontroller. Four bits. <laughs> yes. Uh, 1K of ROM, but eight bits, eight bits wide ROM. So the instructions are eight bits, but I think then the, a lot of times the way these things are, it's, it's address instruction, so it's still only a four bit instruction. So ROM is 1K, RAM is 32, four bit words, um, you get uh, two ports times four bits, and input you get one port times three bits, so eight, nine, 10, 11. Eight bit shift register, interrupt, 63 instructions. Yeah, so here is the, uh, here's the block diagram, so it's a masked ROM. You can't program this thing. You, you have to buy the chip pre-programmed. So that's some development for these things. And you can't change the program. You have to buy a whole new chip. Uh, so a 10-bit program counter, uh, ALU, 4-bit four four uh, ALU. Here's the RAM. Yeah. So here's the I.O. So yeah, we have uh, eight bits of out and three bits of in. And there's an S.I.O. So there's a shift register in here to do serial in and out. Um, yeah, 6411. Never heard of such a beast. Never heard of such a beast. Okay, so that's what 
that's what this chip is. These are just some tie together logic uh, 4081, which is a AND gate, and a 4011, which is a NAND gate, I believe. And that's about it. There's a little bit of analog circuitry up here that's the microphone amplifier and the speaker amplifier. That's what these are. Yep, that's about it. That's about it. All right, so the epiphany that I had was I already had a robot. I uh, asked Hemsai Dog his opinion, um, and I'm not sure he's a great fan. He wasn't quite sure. He thinks it looks too much like vermin. Maybe he'll like. Maybe he'll like it when I transplant the brain. And the cool thing about the robot is, hey, it's a robot. It's got two wheels, just like mine. It steers by the two wheels, just like mine. Uh, it uh, has smarts and it has some collision avoidance and stuff. I might want to add that. But the most important thing is, it comes with a remote control. So this is what I want. Uh, it's got a joystick and a little uh, display and buttons. It's perfect. It's perfect for my project. So I'm going to control my Omnibot uh, with my Crowbot. There you go. Um, and uh, so I'm going to take this board out. Now, the nice thing about the Crowbot is completely open source. The hardware is all open source. I have all schematics for it. I'll go through those at some time and all of the software is open, so I can just steal their software and punch in my own. So it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both. These are paired together Bluetooth, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And uh, there's a little switch down here where you can choose a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's got some line following sensors and stuff, so uh, it's extensible though because it's got these two connectors on it. So here's one for just some IO and an A to D. And here's some I squared C or just regular IO. So yeah, so five volt, it, it's a 3.3 volt board, but it can talk five volts to peripheral, so it's perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to maybe control other things like uh, maybe a speech or display or other things like that with I squared C and just plug it into this connector here. So that'll be really, really cool. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, next step will be to uh, disassemble my crowbot and uh, look at the schematic, see what I want to do. And uh, I might be able to use their motor drivers or I might have to create my own motor drivers like the big H bridges. I think these are 3.3 volt motors in here and I'm gonna have six volt motors in mine. I don't know if I can just use the same driver chips they have as a six volt. I have to check the data sheet out on those. But if not, I'll just uh, bring over uh, some IO pins. Uh, it's actually got them here. IO 12, 13, 14, and 15 are dedicated to the motor, so I can just bring those out to whatever board I use to drive the uh, drive the motors. I've got some big, big H-bridge uh, boards coming in the mail that uh, I might be able to use as well. So we'll see how they function. But yeah, that's my plan.